you have created history tonight. Never in the history of Central Leeward or Leyu have we seen such a massive crowd as this crowd here tonight. and the NDP felt the tremors, just the tremors of this crowd yesterday and they were running up and down like crazy ants trying to get a little excitement but they should know that once I'm back NDP is dead and Exeter is back in Canada And this is a fine Sunday evening. We thank God for fine weather that you can come out and get thousands from the north, from the east, from the west, from the south, where even the Grenadines constituencies are here this evening. Everybody got here safely and we pray that at the end of this meeting you will get back to your homes in safety. We thank God for the ULP. 21 years we have been in existence and it seems as if this party was divinely created to take care of the challenges and of the problems we have here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am happy that I was part of the first 10 years of the ULP in government and what accomplishments have we experienced during the past 10 years? We must recognize the great contribution by the founders of this party. There is no general secretary in all of the Caribbean for any political party as Julian Francis, who has beaten all the experts, the NDP, brought from overseas and gave us victory. by a great, wise leader in the person of Vincent Beach. Because the first election we had after the party was formed in 1998, I know it was a bitter disappointment for Vincent, but we won a solid majority of the votes in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with 56% compared to 44% for the NDP, even though we didn't get in government. Vince was the man who led us in that 1998 election. And I say he's a wise man because he gave way to one of the greatest leaders 
the Caribbean has ever seen in the person of Ralph E. Gunsell, who has led us to victory after victory. He has done it in the past, and he'll do it again in 2015. I want to thank my constituency council here in Central Ewood under the leadership of Lance John and all those who are members of the Central Ewood constituency council. You have heard from our dynamic youth leader in the post of Randy Brewster. Gave another hand for Comrade Randy Brewster. If it up, Randy, you would be a rep future representative of Central Ewan. And we have a vibrant women's arm that has been working hard in order to make sure that we bring home the seat, not barely winning, but with a tremendous majority in the next, next coming election. And I'm pleased, I'm happy, I am proud that he chose me to be his deputy for 10 years. It was an honor to work with Ralph Gonsalves, a man of faith, a man of vision, a man who can lead any country in the world. God has blessed his mind and we are grateful for the leadership that he has been given to this country. I have seen that vision in action. If it wasn't for Ralph Gonzalez, we would not have had the Rebecca Bridge because the NDP people were saying that was impossible. The place was too sandy, and when it rained, the snow bridge can stand the flood, withstand the flood that would come down there. And I was there when Ralph Gonzalez put his hand to his cheek, looked up to the ceiling, and he said, he told Montgomery Daniel, we must have a Ralaka bridge. Call the chief engineer, Jeffrey Cato, from Public Works. And when Jeffrey came, he asked Jeffrey whether we could have a bridge there. Jeffrey said, yes, Prime Minister. And he said, well, I think in my head, I know I, where I can get the money. And today, we don't have to roll up our pants foot anymore to cross the Dry River Bridge. We have a bridge that even the NDP leaders are not ashamed to travel on because that bridge was done by the ULP. Thanks to Ralph Gonzalez. I say he's a man of faith. And those of you who read your Bible know that in Hebrews it is said that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. While on him Eustace was rooted in the ground and, can, and could only see that Rebecca was good for planting groundnuts. This man of faith, this man of vision, while on him was looking in the ground, Ralph was looking it up in the air and see some planes, 747, landing on that trip, and he said, I want an airport here. Now you will hear the NDP say, oh, we had the faith that we would get an airport. But as the comrade always tells you, that faith without works is dead. So that's no faith at all. But 
Why don't them use this damn saw that there could not be an airport in our time? Ralph Gonsalves, press on and make sure that we have an airport that would lead us into the 21st century and would provide economic stimulus and growth for our country here, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're making history. This time, 757 is a major flight now for JFK Airport flying into Arbor International Airport. When the Prime Minister laid out his plans for an airport, Arnim Eustis went on the air to answer Ralph because he said it was impossible to have an international airport. And this is a copy of the address that Arnim Eustis gave. He said, fellow Vincentians, good evening. I begin this presentation by reading from Luke chapter 14, verses 28 to 13. And he said, Jesus was addressing a large crowd and he made the following statements. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will you not sit down and estimate the cost of it if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation as, and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him saying this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. This is the position that Ralph Gonzalez find himself in, himself in today. Our economy is in a free fall and we cannot afford an airport. The truth is, while Arnold Eustace goes to church, he would not have known that this passage was in Luke because he's not a student of the Bible as Ralph Gonzalez is. Ralph Gonzalez can quote from Jeremiah about fire in the bones. He can quote from Joel. He can quote from Nehemiah with Sanballat and Tobias. But you know where Adam got this from? It was from Anisha. Anisha Batiste who gave him this because he doesn't, he goes to church but he's not a student of the Bible. If you ask him to repeat John 3, 16, he will tell you the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not go on. He goes on in his address and he asks, so where are we going? Gonzalez is perpetrating the biggest deception against the people of this country in its entire history. That's what Arnim said. But now they are scrambling on board to say, yes, we will finish the airport. We think it's a good idea and we want to be part of it. But they will never do it. If the ULP does not get back in power, they said that they would, if they get in power, they would need a study for five years, so they would put the airport on hold, and the airport will never done because they are afraid that Ralph Gonzalez would get the credit. As a matter of fact, the man took the opposition, all the members of the opposition, and said they wanted to go and see the airport. And so when they went out there, their jaws dropped open like donkey. I won't say jackass. <laughs> so they went out there in order that they would get information to criticize Ralph. But I tell you, when one of the members of the delegation, St. Clair Leacock, when he saw the thing, he said, my God, what I'm seeing before me here is a miracle. And God, and 
RM said, man, shut your mouth. I brought you here to get ammunition to cause Ralph. Are you blessing him by saying that this is a miracle? But when he further considered, he went on further to say, boy, if we get in power, I'm going to recommend that this airport be called Ralph E. Gonzalez International Airport. Now this reminds me of a story in the Bible. A king of the Moabites by the name of Balak when he looked out and saw Israel, he sent bribes to one of the prophets and said, I want you to come down and cause these people for me because I've heard of the mighty works that God did for them in getting out of Egypt. And I know whom you bless is blessed and whom you curse is cursed. And the Lord kept told Balaam not to go. But Balaam went, and when Balaam went, three times he stood and when he looked upon Israel, he started to bless Israel. And the king of Balaam told him, go, just go, I brought you here to curse Israel. And look three times, you have blessed them. And the same thing happened with St. Clary Cock. They went out here to curse Ralph, but God put the truth in their hearts and in their mouth and they said it was a miracle and they said that it should be named after Ralph Gonzalez. <laughs> we have come a long way. Many of you have seen the good works done by this party for the past 14 years. This party is a confluence of two great tributaries coming together and without this party there would have been no education revolution because Anna Eustace never wanted to see poor people, children get the, the same education or go to the same secondary school as he did. He said if you have universal secondary education it would water down the education he got if it was not for the coming together of this mighty party there would have been no rock country no international airport there would have been no help for the senior citizens and poor people would have probably still been getting 60 or 70 dollars a month Thank God for the Unity Labour Party. And our mission is not accomplished. We have a greater work to do. And we want you to stand by us. The people of Central Iwan, we want you to make sure that you give firm support to the Unity Labour Party. Don't be fooled by NDP. As a matter of fact, if you want to know who these people are, ask the founder of the NDP. James Mitchell, Sir James Mitchell has said that I need not to step down. It's no secret it was in the paper. He said he's too old to be Prime Minister. He ought to step aside and let somebody else run the party. And because of that, they cost James Mitchell, and he has some of them, he has some of them in the party who have nothing good to say about Sir James. I talked to one of the candidates one day, and he said, one of the things we are proud about in the NDP is how Arnim is able to stand up to Sir James I said, but he might make a difference between the Grenadine seats, whether you win or the ULP. 
He said, well, don't bother about that. Mitchell has no influence down in the Grenadines. He's like what was advertised as the Maytag repairman. He sits in a corner and he walks in the street and people hardly say good morning to him. He said that Mitchell went down to the Southern Grenadines and tried to get Oliveira to give up the seat and go to school and the people chase him out of town so they don't, the people in the Southern Grenadines have no use for Arnie Eustace. For, 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 for James Mitchell. And I want you to see the difference, the scorn, the ridicule they pour upon the man who was the leader of the party and see how we treat the foundation member, the former leader of our party, Vincent Beach. It's like cheese to talk to cheese. If you ask a man like Anatole Scott, the brother of Jerry Scott, the man who lives in California, but who has been doing position paper for an amusement, this is what he says, and it was, I'm reading here from the Searchlight newspaper. He lives in Toronto, sorry. He said, I'm reading from the newspaper, an interview he said, there are too many people that Eustace has messed up based on hearsay. It's a pattern in this man that I find totally unacceptable. He said, I feel used and I feel abused for what he has done to me. I may have my negatives about Ralph Gonzalez, but on balance, I can live with the man. There is no way I can put up with you, sis. I have given you, sis, the benefit of the doubt since 2001, since 2000, but he's not fit to be leader. He said, you, sir, should not be leader of any party in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and all that is going on in the NDP is nothing but a bunch of crap that they have going on there. That's what Scott Anatol, Jerry Scott's brother, a staunch member of the, L of the NDP, said about what's going on in the NDP. Comrades, here in Central E1, we have accomplished a lot. I would have liked if I had the time to answer certain charges made on the NDP platform by certain people. One, at the Lay Waterfront, and two, down in Cottons. Very young friend of mine, Ramon, said that I took away his job and I closed up the Learning Resource Center. The truth is, I like the young man, and I am the man who recommended, he didn't have a job, I recommended that he would be placed on the YES program and lead, the, the, the lead out in the computer room at the Straker Resource Center. But the truth is, many of the people who went there, the fellows were older than he. He had absolutely no control over the young people. The person who was in charge of cleaning the learning resource center came to me with tears in her eyes. And she said a whole set of young boys going up there, they would go in the porch over the street and they would have fun. They would go in the computer room and all they would do is to play video games so that when students got there to do their homework, they could not do it. And when they would ride up and down on the handrail, go come down, slide down on it and go back up. They broke out the shades on the light going towards the library. And when she spoke to them, they caused her 
and what they did to add insult to injury. They went in the bathroom and they defecated. They do do right on the bathroom floor and tell her she must clean it up. And because of that, she had to put a lock on the bathroom and they broke the locks off. So the place was completely out of control and the fellas broke up all 19 computers that were there so we just had to close down the whole center there so that is what has happened not that we took away the job from ramon or not that we didn't have confidence in the youth but the youth had no control over the young fellas coming up there to have fun by playing video games i heard them in cotton a man Vaughn and Douglas, they call him BB or something like that. Saying Central Newell has been neglected under the ULP. Well, he should be the last one to talk because he did not have any light going up there to where he lived at Palmis. And it took about 10 poles. And Benedict told him there is no way they could carry light up there. He sent Winston Games to beg me to try my best because he wanted to have an ongoing egg for a farm up there to sell eggs. And I went into Binlek and pleaded with them and they put the 10 poles and he was the first person to get light up there. So when he said that Central Leeward was neglected. He was not neglected at all. He got the best of it. And because of the egg business he has up there, he was able to build a three-story building right where he has the egg farm up there. And he has told me that he makes good money from the egg business that he set up there. Comrades, we have done a lot for Central Leeward. Look at the waterfront. I remember that Friday said in Parliament he would like to get a waterfront like the one that we have in Leyu. Look at this plain field that you're on. When we came here, this plain field was quite uneven with a hill here and sloping going down to that side. Well, it was a ball run. And thanks to Lance John, we were able to brave the spring field and made it and thanks to Gideon Nash who adopted the spring field. And we have been able to put the spring field in a good condition. I went up to the quarry up in Palmis and I told the Arthur brothers that they must do something for the spring field. And it is because of my intervention and my importuning that Arthur Brothers built that change room over there that you see there. As a matter of fact, even when I was in opposition, the NDP neglected the hard court down in Leudia, next to the Harmon Young Centre, behind the school. They had no light on the hard court. And I would ask you to ask one of the strongest NDP men in the U, Ron Phipps. He saw me in Kingston while I was in opposition. I was just elected, going from place to place, begging Dr. Cyrus, begging Dr. Valentine for money in order to put a light on the hard court and resurface the hard court down there. That's what we did he did even in opposition in order for our young people to have a piece of heart. Comrades, we have great plans for the future. I tell you, one of the things that is of utmost importance to me is jobs in Central Niwa. I know a lot of people here 
young people are looking for jobs. And I want to give you a measure of hope because we have 500 acres at Mount Red Peter Sioux. And we are working hard in order to get a credible investor to invest and build a resort even larger than Bocomet Bay so that people here could get employment. Now, the boy there, Ben Exeter, said that he would bring, well first he says he's employing, he has four little boys walking under him, and he would bring 30 jobs in this constituency. NDP said it would bring 500 in all of St. Vincent. I am looking for almost 1,000 jobs in Central Leeward here because with that resort, we are going to have chefs. We are going to have banquet chefs. We are going to have wine stewards. We are going to have food and beverage managers. We are going to have bartenders. We are going to have supervisory bartenders. We are going to have executive housekeepers in charge of 10 rooms. We are going to have regular housekeepers. We are going to have hostesses. We are going to have maids. We are going to have purchasing agents. We are going to have activities manager. We are going to have reservation clerks. We are going to have attraction guides. We are going to have amusement park supervisors. We are going to have green keepers. We are going to have landscapers. We are going to have health aid workers. We are going to have carry boys. We are going to have scuba divers. We are going to have golf coaches. We are going to have electrical workers, air condition men, refrigeration repairmen, concession attendant at the clubhouse, bath house attendant to give out towels, beach boys to put out chairs, laundry workers, musicians, farmers, fishermen, drivers. We are going to have over 1,000 jobs at that resort at Mount Red Peterson. a modern blackfish shell down in Butland Glass. You may not know, but the outside wall, trunks and what, but what obtains here now. You can't hang blackfish on a pole with flies going on and off. That is not sanitary enough for the outside world. And we want to build a modern blackfish shell that we can have lights coming through the roof in order to dry the blackfish and suddenly, uh, do I don't eat it, the blackfish must stay sweeter when it is done in a modern way that the people can enjoy it. I tell you the people in Mayu, and I say it in front of the Prime Minister, I say it in front of the Minister of Transport and Works, we are entitled to a Bailey Bridge, a Bailey Pedestrian Bridge, not a traffic bridge, right across the supermarket, the river across the supermarket, so that people going to the supermarket and going to the bakery don't have to jump on stones, and when the river comes down, they don't have to walk all the way around to the school bridge or all the way up to Swamgut Bridge, and I ask the Prime Minister, I ask Julian, Transport and Works, give me my pedestrian bridge across the river there. I say to the people of Pokemon, in the coming year, we are going to open a major health facility at Pokemon Bay. The NDP against it, they say it should have been up in Charles or some place. But when you go over there and see the polyclinic that a little place like Bokomen is getting, 
I think that is a hospital. So you don't, when pain strikes you and you are in labor, you don't have to drive all the way to Kingstown. A doctor would be there to give you a delivery. People would be employed. And Bookerman, that was once famous only for tree tree, and Plum and Tamaran is now famous for major health facility, famous for the resort they have at Bookerman, famous for a secondary school, the Bookerman Bay Secondary School, famous for a Golden Year Center. So it's a major village with worldwide reputation. Thanks to the ULP. Before the end of the year, a foreign government has promised me 10 brand new computers to go in the Straker Resource Center down there. I don't want more than 10 because I want to keep the classes small. So young people, you can get back there to do your homework and to learn how to use computers. Comes early next year because I'll be getting these computers by the end of the year. The people in this constituency would be getting lands. Do you know that this ULP has given out over 4,000 lots of land at 10 cents and 50 cents a square foot to poor people in this country? We gave out almost 200 at Greenville and recently we gave out, how much was it, Maxi? 162 we recently gave out again at Peter Soap at um, for, for uh, Mount Wayne, not Mount Wayne, for Cottons and Wallinaboo and Barony. But we have some more areas where we would have to give out lands. And so in the coming months, we will be giving lands to the people at Jemison Hole giving lands to the people at Green Hill, Revolution, and the people at Betrami. That's my village, that's where I was born. The people of Betrami should know that I am the only man who can get the land from Miss St. Hill, buy the land from the government, and put a motorable road going up to Betrami and enable the people to get a deal to their land of Betrami. I know some of them are ungrateful, but I tell you I would do it because I want to uplift my ancestral village and lay you. For the years that NDP has been in power, they did not even build a bus shell in Leyu. The first bus shell that has come to Leyu, I am the one who got that bus shell at Post River there. And I have two bus shell in the Straker Resource Center to be erected in Leyu. Hopefully one at Velaxcana and the other one at Calgary Village. We hope we can see those two bus shells put up by the end of the year or early next year. Comrades, we have a lot to do together. You can't afford to take a man like Ben Exeter and put him in office. The man who has said that he left here at nine years of age and when he came back after 40 years, he has seen no improvement in the EU or in Central Leeward. I want you to know that I, let me tell you a little history. The place you are standing on now is sacred to me. Why is it sacred? On this very spot, known this is part of the Rutland Vale, and people, it is not Ruthland Vale. It is Rutland Vale. This very segment of the Rutland Vale estate was called Dam Peace because a dam was right across it. Right behind me, they call it Kimbo Peace. Right across there was firing stone. That's the names that they gave them. Above Pastor Clark, they call up there Nigger House. And where, that's Nigger House 1. And where Derry Williams is living across, there was Nigger House 2. Below down there was Furnace and Floodgate. 
Up there was Barony Road, and where I'm living was Bamboo Road. My grandmother and my mother worked on this estate with Ben's back, with a 5 p hole, and their sweat has fertilized, nourished the soil. And the man who owned this, all this estate called Rutland Vale was a member of parliament as part of the plantocracy in those days, Mr. Alec Fraser. And here I am, the son of estate workers, offering myself once again to sit where the owner of the whole estate sat, Rutland Bay Estate. I am offering myself to you here as your candidate for Central E1. Ben Zika was in Canada for 40 years. Not once did he consider the people here. He has relatives here. He has not sent for one to help them in this constituency. He never stuck a barrel or some money and sent to his poor family up in Tisha Road. When he came home on vacation, he stayed at Cobblestone. He never came down here. So that when he came now, he went up to Sherrod to look for his cousin, Claudia. I tell Claudia, you're my cousin. Claudia, see I know where you come from. Never send a case of all sweetie or paradise plum to his family here. All of a sudden, he loves Leyu and he wants to represent Leyu. When we had last Christmas lighting up, Pastor Clark, was in charge of the lighting up ceremony co committee. They sent a letter begging him for a little donation to help with the light. He said not a cent, and he didn't give one farthing to help with the lighting up ceremony of the Christmas season here. Yet he wants to represent Central Leeward. He wants to tell you and lay you that he loves you. He went to Barony and said he's looking for a young lady there because he heard his father left a, a child there who was supposed to be his sister. All the years he was in Canada, he never inquired about his poor sister in Barney. So now he come back home, he wants a food. He's looking for a sister. Comrades, if he can see improvement in Central Leeward, then he is blind and he has been back talking this constituency saying all he sees are prostitutes and homosexuals and I said I've been living here I came back here and I would love to know where these prostitutes not that I want them for myself but, but I don't know of any prostitution ring and they come down here and insult the people in Central Leeward saying that when they dress to come to town, they dress in old clothes and they wear two left foot shoes. And I tell you, I am proud sometimes to see my people in Central Leeward dress. They dress far better than he in his pencil foot, black pants. Our people here wear dress, not in old clothes, not in two left foot shoes. They are well-dressed men and women and not in pencil foot, little black pants that he wears. He said he has brilliant ideas for the upliftment of Leyu. What are the brilliant ideas? He said all oh, Leyu has a lot of natural resources. What are the natural resources? He said, oh, we can sell water from Leyu and make money. I said, go on top. Talk, young man, I've been through that already, and I know what the people of Leyu say, they don't want their water for sale. So you go on and tell them you want to sell their water. He promised, oh, we, he can bring jobs here that would pay 35 US dollars an hour. Now he must be thinking because he comes from Canada, he can come with a big Canadian lie and fool the people in Central Leeward. It would not work. There is no way that he can bring jobs here 
for 35 US dollars per hour. That means that people would be working here for 93 EC dollars an hour. That means that they'll be making $15,000 a month. Foolishness. Don't make them come here and fool you with such nonsense. Doing house to house. And he told them, you know what? You people should be on poor relief, public assistance. I don't know why the representative has not put you all on poor relief. But I tell you, he will take that. But then his party in parliament is saying they should take people off the poor relief roll. So what he's trying to do is to fool the people in Barry by telling them he will put them on poor relief. But when he gets in power, he will join with his party and say, too many people are poor relief, we have to take them off. The NDP has made, it is disgraceful the way they treated Norrell Hall. They use him like an old mule, and then they cast him aside. And they are not going to do anything better for Exeter. Let me tell you something. And I believe, I believe, he said he was going to be here, that Dr. O'Dane, the veterinarian, is here. After they introduce Exeter as a candidate here, and him sent for Dr. O'Dane at his house, and told him, frankly, we don't have much confidence in Ben Exeter. And we want you to be the candidate for Central E1 because we hear that you, Dr. Odin, is very popular in Barry. They told Dr. Odin, we know you are working at Trinity College, Trinity School of Medicine, and you have a contract. And if there's a problem with the contract, bring the contract to us and we will pay for the, broken, for the broken contract if you have to break the contract and we want to announce you because if you agree we are going to dump Ben Exeter and announce you at the meeting they had at Zion Hill so they have no respect for Ben Exeter if, ben, if Dr. Olin had told them yes he would run they were ready within a matter of days to announce that Dr. O'Dell was the candidate and dump Ben Exeter. If you think I'm lying, ask Dr. O'Dell if that's not the truth, I am telling you. Comrades, there is much I could say. But I know we have the comrade leader and many of you want to hear this great leader. But I want you to know, I am pleased with the turning out this evening. Please, with the young people who are there to support me. Please, with the crowd that came down from my brother Theo's house, marching in here, I am happy and I feel confident that comes whenever it is. I don't have the paper here. But whenever it is that the Prime Minister announces the election, we are going to bring home the seat with the biggest margin that we have ever brought Central Leeward home. And we are going to bring home more seats than we have ever brought in. Stay with us. Let's join it together. Let's hold hand in hand. God bless you and good night.